We got off that. Things escalated in a hurry out there. Side of the Bay to Nord River uh, may take longer than expected. Uh, it's a rocky river, but off to the side there's some barrens. I think I'd rather take that than uh, testing my balance on uh, some of these boulders. With our packs heavy, skipping the large uneven boulders didn't seem like the best of ideas. So for now, we headed in over the barrens. Let's go, Sack. We're back on the game trails. Look how deep that is. That's up to my uh, chest. But uh, down on the bottom, it is beaten. A beaten path. Man. Years and years of use and abuse. Oh, and I'm tangled up. Gotta go. So on a long expedition like this, you know, I'm starting to find that you have moments that are tough. Right, uh, right now this afternoon, I'm going up this marsh, it's really soft. Every step is just, you're digging in. And, you know, you don't want to give up. You hit a wall though, motivational wise. So, one thing that helps me stay on track is thinking that you know everything I need is on my back shelter food tools clothes everything I need if I want to set tent up now and stop I can and I can regroup you know the reality is you got to make ground out here and you just can't uh, set the tent up every time you you're in a grind you got to keep going but it's nice to know that and sometimes you might have to if you're really in a tough situation or going through a tough tough part of the trip. So that's what helps me anyways. We're almost a Jubilee Lake. Here, impressively etched in the grasses of the marshlands and the mosses of the barrens are the trails of moose and the Middle Ridge caribou herd. By late afternoon, it was back to the river where we hopped friendlier rocks for the remainder of the day. So Jubilee is just straight up through there. We're here on a little landing uh, in front of this 
what looks to be a honey hole for fishing. Got a couple winning ish already. Uh, so I don't know if we're going to stick it out here this evening. Nice little spot for the tent over there. And uh, tomorrow I'll inflate the raft or I'll do it this evening. So I'll probably go out around fishing. And we can try over here in the morning to see if we can get up to Jubilee. Uh, looks like it's some rapids. Might be able to walk along the side. If not, there's forest here that separates the shoreline. Uh, it's kind of tangly. So we can go in through this little spot, up around the forest, uh, there's some barren, and then come down on Jubilee that way, which might be a little easier. So I think for this evening, uh, we're going to set up camp right here. There's no harm. Number three. They're getting bigger. Let's see, he's 16 inches. I just fished from the rocks there and uh, five dandy winning ish. Landlocked salmon, we call them here in Newfoundland. Me and Sackle are going to be eating well. Saku's on um, watch, aren't you, buddy? Make sure no one comes into camp. Or nothing. Good start to the morning, Sack. Nice brookie. You can't keep him all, can you? <laughs> he slipped away. After losing a couple like that now on this trip. Nice book, sack. On this day, before breaking camp, we headed out in the raft to further investigate the fine fishing pool that lay in front of us. Ciao, Tack. That's a winnie. We'll put him back. We got, we got a nice bag of trout uh, growing over there by camp. I'm just looking for a couple nice brook trout here. Hey, Sack. Or a real big winning ish. One or the other. Operating on a double hook, one snapped. This is a nice one, Sack. Might be. Another winnie. Gotta watch this hook on the raft here. It's dangerous coming in. Sack, what do you think? He's a keeper, but we got a few. I'll keep fishing. There he goes.
This is a trout. Trout and the spinner almost crushed the boat coming in. That could have been bad if there was a hook point out. He's a slimy fella. That's a nice one, Zach. That's a nice one, buddy. So we were packed up, ready to go here. I was gonna make a move today. But, man, I love this place. Uh, we just went on a little fishing trip, so after that we decided to stay. Uh, we did well, and that means we can uh, camp out here for another night and fatten up on fish, because I guarantee we need it. <laughs> after shedding a few pounds, but. There you go. That might seem like a lot of fish, and it is. But we'll have lunch, we'll have supper, we'll have breakfast. And we need every bit of it. I'm telling you, trying to match the calories we burn day to day, it's impossible with the food I got packed. Impossible. And this right here is going to uh, give us a good boost. And what a feast we're going to have now. Got to clean them now. One by one. I really, really don't want to do this on June 1st. But I was cleaning the fish, and as I hooked out ahead, my hands all slimy. My knife was in that same hand, and now it's out there in the pond, or this little steady. Not wasting no time. I can see it. Thank God the handle is orange. So I'll make sure the camera's still running. All right, we're good. <laughs> oh, Zach, I don't want to do this, man. I can see it. I can see it. was a, a Swiss Army pocket knife. It would have done me, but there's no way I could see it out there. Whew, that's a wrap. That's oh. your turn. Oh. 
Had a little afternoon nap. There was a light rain shower there. We filled our bellies with fish and laid down. Sometimes it's nice to just do nothing out here and relax. That's all a part of the experience. So we'll be back on the move tomorrow. So we're looking at day 45 here today. Me and Zach hanging out, having our uh, little morning lounge. And we're back moving and grooving today. We're gonna make a push for the 400 kilometer mark, which is around uh, another 20 kilometers. Really hard to even believe that we've came that far, but we have, and uh, it's June 2nd, so I'm thinking Within nine days, around the 10th, uh, we should be close to Swift Current area. I don't know if you can hear Saku. Anyways, uh, we crossed a little steady uh, to finish our portage to Jubilee. Well, I did, and I wanted to see if Saku would swim across. Uh, he has swam, but right now he's having a rough time leaving that shoreline. I don't want to go back and get him. He's never going to learn that way. Now, I mean, eventually I will, but I'm just going to wait to see how long it takes for him to make a move. Come on, Zach! Heel! Let's go! Come on! Dead a boy! Come on! He's stuck now. He can't get around. There's a big rock there, so he's going to be forced to swim or beat the bushes around the rock. Good boy, Saku, come on. Haha, <laughs> that a boy. See? It's better for him. I can't go back and get him all the time. Good boy. Good boy, come here. Good boy, that's a boy, Sac. That's a job well done, bud. I'm uh, pulling the raft like this now this morning. Uh, it's only a short little, not even a kilometer portage here to, to Jubilee. This is a bit quicker than putting it on my back or uh, deflating it. Uh, not a bad morning. Zach, new day, new movement, baby. This way. Caught up. That's not good. Watch out for the sharp sticks, eh? You gotta watch out for them sharp ones. There she is, Jubilee. We made her. It was named by. James Patrick Howley uh, on his historic expedition from the Beta Nord right down to Terranova 
Howley came along with three or four Mi'kmaq guides and they helped them penetrate this country which still remains the same as it did back then. Pretty, uh, pretty cool to think, Asac. We're seeing the same sights and sounds. It was in 1887 when the geologist Howley became one of the first Newfoundlanders of European descent to visit the rugged interior via the Bay de Nord River. The arduous journey of near 200 kilometers helped create the first detailed maps of our island and would not have been possible without the experienced Mi'kmaq guides. Today, the land here is just as primitive as it was then, and there were moments on Jubilee Lake where I could feel the spirits of Howley and the boys paddling right beside us. Now, we had near 12 kilometers down this lake to reach a portage, which we would follow over to the next water system. And we're off to the races, <laughs> but a cloud of flies right behind us. <laughs> That's a part of it. And speaking of Howley uh, and the 1887 trip up the Bay to Nord River, to the Terra Nova and down <clears throat> to the other side, I mean, wow, what a crazy expedition. I think I got it hard at times. They walked up the entire river pretty much from the south coast. Just a grueling mission. And then they had to go down Terra Nova. The boys were the boys were hardy. So me coming in here and doing this trip really makes me respect their trip and, and what they did. And anyone else who came here too. You know. The Mi'kmaq, this is where they hunted and trapped. And they would make tramps 20, 30, 40 kilometers a day by foot, paddle, snowshoe, and 100, 120 pound loads. I mean, they were superhuman. <laughs> right? Crazy to think about it, isn't it, though? interests me. It's our heritage, it's about our province and uh, that was the early days, right? These people paved the way, made maps, you know, learned about what's in here. So future settlers could utilize it and be successful. And give uh, us a place to call home here on the rock. Howley had named this Jubilee because of Queen Victoria's celebration that very summer. But long before this, the local Mi'kmaq name had always been Sandy Pond. And here is some evidence why they may have given it that title. Things always got to get interesting for the boys, doesn't it? Geez, old man, we're out uh... A good 200 yards from shore. Pretty shallow uh, shoal water here. Show you. How convenient. We land right on a game trail. Hopefully that paves the way uh, right to Knife Pan. Knife Pan by the way because I think I left my pocket knife there. I won't be looking for it. That's gone kind of through a full winter and uh, I can care less. <laughs> Once unloading the raft, I had to prepare navigation for a tricky portage of about eight kilometers ahead. Not knowing what was coming next, a large excited pit laid in my stomach. That's what these trips are all about. Oh man. One of the roughest sections so far the trip, uh, I'm thinking. Is this uh, trip from Jubilee up to the next string of lakes to get us the Eastern Meal Oh man.
pure Tuckamore, this is it. It's here. By far the roughest Tuckamore uh, we've seen. Oh buddy. Just bagged here. <sighs> Holy darn. Come on, Zach. Come on, buddy, let's go. Come here, Sack. Let me get that for you, bud. Oh, there we go. We just came through that jungle there, then. Sack got tangled up. There you go, buddy. Go on. Got him on the set camp up right here. It's just gnarly. And even when you're on a good game trail, all of a sudden it gets deep with Tuckamore up to your chest. Hooking into the raft, hooking into your clothes, bags. You know, it's a hard place. Bound to lose something up here too, right? So I'm always checking every so often. Sacks hooking in. What a mess. Flies. Jesus. Just came by some coyote shit. Looks fresh too, it's still damp. They're up in this area beating around. Uh, you know, there's not too many human endeavors going on up in this country. So we made it uh, four of that eight to nine K. That's it. Packing it in. It's, uh, it's quarter after six. That took us quite some time. <sighs> Ooh, what a plug. Managed to lose something too. My lens cap. Knew that. Lucky I didn't lose more now. Back in that tangly mess. Anyways, that's enough for the day. Camp's going up. Chore number one is done. Next up, put the tent up and feed Saku. Get the gear out. I just wanted to smoke them flies out of here, that's all. Bloody old things, but. Flies, I love flies. What are you talking about? Should they not even bite me? They're just hitting me. Sack who likes them too. Ah, it's all part of the experience. You can't complain about it, can you? Uh, you can't complain. What are you complaining for? I'm out here. There's more good times than bad times. There's flies. Hey, they live here too. So, uh, I suck it up. So does Saku. <laughs> Get the tent up now. Smoke out the bloody little friggers. Smoke them out, we will. After the toil of the day, it's unexplainable rewards. Like an evening at this camp, basking in the immense freedom and peace of the land that makes it all worth it.
There she is, Knife Pond, my old friend. Spent a bit of time out there last summer. Ah, it's always nice to get back to a place you've been before. And uh, we'll get a good view of, of Mount Sylvester from out there too. Mount Sylvester, as seen on the horizon, was also summited by Howley on his expedition. There he erected a cairn to help survey the area. That peak I myself had visited the summer before this one in preparation for our journey. The name Sylvester came from another Newfoundland explorer, William Cormack, who walked across our island in 1822. Stopping at the mountain, he named it after his trusty Mi'kmaq guide, Sylvester Joe. Uh, we're making good time today. We're pushing uh, to get the Eastern Meal Peg. And we're only around four or five kilometers uh, from there now. So uh, I'm pleased with their progress here. Uh, one issue now is the wind is coming uh, at us and the raft is trying to just take me up in the sky. Every gust goes underneath it. And, uh, that's why I got this rope here. I'm pulling down uh, on the front end so uh, it won't lift me up until <laughs> like a kite. <laughs> Anyways, I'm still at it. Is that a boy sack? Look at the hops on you. So we've been in and out of the raft today, uh, you know, numerous times. I think this will be the seventh now, uh, of reloading and paddling up this lake. A bit of a wind's picking up now, so that's not good. But uh, that's it. We're hopping between little ponds and gullies, and this is the only way to do it. Thank God we got this raft and not a canoe. But we keep going and keep things fresh. That's where we want to get this evening. We got about one, two, three, four, five, about six kilometers, six or seven. But a tough walk from here to here. So we're looking at a good two, two hours, maybe closer to three. Have to sit still for this one sec. Zach, we made her old boy. Yeah, we came uh, along over without an issue. I stuck close to shore for the most part. And uh, we're here now, getting late, so we got two kilometers to Eastern Meal Pig. We're gonna make that and uh, I don't know if we'll cross it. That got tangled up. I got you, buddy. Hold on. Go on, keep going. Had a boy. Had a boy. That won't stop. With the wind aggressive and our bodies tired, we held up at the edge eastern meal peg, and we would cross in the morning. So we made it to Eastern Meal Peg, and it's been a long, hard day. I think I deserve a little swig before supper. 
keeping it local. Good. I'll be having some more of that in my tea later. So here we are. It's uh, day 47 now. Me and Saku were just getting geared up to take off. Kettle's on now for the last cup of coffee before I hit the road. Today, if we get 15 kilometers, that's good. That's been our average since the country's gotten a little more uh, tricky to navigate. There's a lot more uh, taking the raft up out of the ponds and putting them back down. I think we did that seven times yesterday. So it sort of slows your progress. But we'll shoot for that today. And hey, we're only around 80 kilometers from Piper's Hole. Stay, Zach. Hold on. Stay. Stay. All right. Come on. Come on. Come on. You know. You know the routine. Come on. No, over here. Good boy. Good boy, buddy. All right. And we're off. Just starting the Eastern Meal Pay Crossing now. Uh, it's around four kilometers. Winds have died off since yesterday evening, nice and light. That should be a nice paddle. So that's it for Eastern Meal Peg for me and Saku. We uh, we got a few fish. Yeah, it's a nice, beautiful lake. Uh, very big and has so many peninsulas and inlets, coves, and there's so many of them throughout. Uh, very easy to get lost on this body of water uh, within one of the little coves and inlets. So uh, you know, best have a map if you're coming in here. And of course, I, I know you wouldn't do it without us. That's it for us, and we keep going onward towards Mita Pond. 
Uh, this walk to Mita Pan is not so bad and it's good because I've done it last year so uh, I'm very familiar with the route and it's mostly marsh the entire way. A bit soft going but I'd much rather marsh than uh, beating the Tuckamore bushes. I guarantee you that. And then when you get up on this stuff, these little rises, uh, the ground's nice and hard and uh, it's even better. So not a bad walk at all. And uh, look what we got. Meter pond. I'd say we did that two kilometers in, geez, 20 minutes, 30 max. Atta boy, Zach. Good work, buddy. Let's go, Keith. Come on. Atta boy. Some boy is. Look at him. Zach, listen, man. We gotta love that keychain on your pack. <laughs> I know you do. Go, Habs, go, baby. That's it. We're almost down there now. Uh, Peter Pond doesn't look too bad. It's gonna be a great little afternoon paddling up her, I think. Oh, I remember this part. A little bushwhack down to the lake. What, what do you think, Zach? I'm thinking down here. It's funny, I've been here once, but uh, I just sort of remember these things. This whole little route that I've been on from last year, uh, all the portages, I just sort of remember uh, what way to go. A piece of driftwood. So, back before this uh, became a reserve in 1990, I do believe, uh, there was cabins in around this area. And once uh, they were told that they were making this a protected place, they had to tear them down for the most part. Uh, there was a couple that were left as licensed lodges, but uh, the rest were torn down. So. There's some remains here on uh, the very top area of Mita Pond. We're into a bit of light rain now. Nothing too serious. We're calling for a good dumping tonight though. I think 10 or 15 millimeters. So. Probably gonna have to get out here, Sac. We're gonna have to walk around this one. It's too rocky to get through. We've already paid our price that way. This little brook now. That's too rocky to get down in the raft, so we're gonna walk down this. But uh, the rain's picked up a bit now, so the rocks are gonna be slippery. You gotta be careful. If uh, if it gets any worse uh, than this with the rain, I think we might set up camp. Uh, there's no point to getting soaking wet. We got 10 kilometers in here. Jackie, what you doing? Hey, buddy, 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 boy. Hey, buddy, buddy. What you doing, buddy, boy? Hey, buddy. Hey, hey. We're gonna go down that brook? We're gonna go down that brook, or what? <laughs> what a mission I'm on here.
the river is real deep. I didn't want to take Saku's pack out. So I'm trying to bushwhack nowhere, only 20, 30 yards. I think I'm stuck now. Put this somewhere. Else.